Property or Bitcoin? The old guard versus the new kid on the block. Which is the best investment? You're about to find out. Should you own Bitcoin? Is it something that could form part of your investment portfolio? And how does it compare to other assets that you could invest in? Obviously, whatever we say is just our opinion. And in any case, we're not going to be able to give a answer personalised to you. But by talking it through and giving it some thought, even if you decide that Bitcoin is actually just not for you, not something you're interested in, it'll make you think about property in a different way. Let's look at it against property. Now, you have to do your own research and and decide if you agree with what we're about to say. Now, Bitcoin and gold are a great defense against inflation, but sometimes you can defend and sometimes you can attack. And property is more than a defender against inflation. It's an attacker against inflation. It actually benefits the more inflation plays out. It does better and better. And that's for two reasons. It doubles up because as an asset class, property goes up in value because it's inflated. Quantitative easing takes place, assets go up in value, including Bitcoin and many others, and property absolutely benefits. So property wins there. So does Bitcoin and so does gold. They're all asset classes as well. Where property doubles up is when you leverage. Because when you buy a property, most investors or property owners will use a mortgage. Now, when you buy a buy-to-let property, you nearly always go with interest only. If you buy a property for £100,000 and you have a 75% loan-to-value mortgage on it, that's 75k. But 75k in 10, 20 years time, the number will be the same because you've got an interest only mortgage. So you've not paid anything down. But the value of that 75k will be far less. In the southeast of England, anyway, you'd probably be paying that for a pint in 20 years. The point is, the value is being eroded. So your asset is going two ways in your favour. It's being inflated in value because of inflation, but the debt you've taken out to buy that asset is being devalued at the same time. So you get a double whammy. Exactly. If you've got cash in the bank, you suffer from inflation. If you've got gold and gold's doing its job, then that is a defence against that. If you leave your money in the bank for 20 years, you're going to have far less purchasing power at the end than you did at the beginning. That's because of inflation. If you put your money into gold and take it out in 20 years, if it's done its job, then your purchasing power should be the same. But property benefits from inflation. Part of it is the debt aspect, which you talked about, Rob, which I think is really important. And the other part is that property is a scarce asset. And therefore, even if property isn't doing anything special, over the long term, its value would be expensive expected to go up with inflation. Or another way of putting it is that the value of the currency will go down and property will stay in the same place. It's the same thing, it's just a weird way of looking at it. But it still very much is an asset that benefits from inflation. The other big benefit of property is that it pays an income. So gold doesn't pay an income, Bitcoin doesn't pay an income. It's a place that you go and put your money in the hope that your purchasing power will be maintained, but you don't expect it to make you any money. With property, it's a real asset, it's a scarce asset. It's also got practical value. People need somewhere to live and they'll pay you to live in your property. Even if it suddenly became illegal to make a capital gain on property, you'd still make rental income because people would still want to pay you to live there because they need somewhere to live. And the other great thing about it is that income stream generally speaking, would be expected to go up in line with inflation because the dynamics of the rental market are such that as people get paid more and people are competing with each other for the best properties, generally speaking, there is a set amount of people's income that they're willing to allocate towards rent and therefore as wages go up, rents go up. Property pays an income and unlike some asset classes, that income stream would be expected to maintain its purchasing power even in the face of inflation. Now we keep referring to Bitcoin and the reason why we're talking about it right now is because people want to understand it. And why do people want to understand it? It's because it's getting so much attention. And why is it getting so much attention? Well, because the prices are all over the place. You're seeing huge, huge gains. Then you're seeing huge drops, then huge gains again. And sometimes the price of Bitcoin can drop and rise by double digit amounts in the space of minutes. Now gold doesn't do that. So while a lot of the core properties of both assets are similar, because so many people are speculating with Bitcoin right now, it's a lot more volatile, which for some people will put them off, 
and for others it will attract them because they'll want to make money quickly. So while people invest in gold as a safe place to store their money, Bitcoin at the moment can't be described as safe as gold. I think that leads nicely into a little roundup of like why you would and why you wouldn't invest in Bitcoin. So why would you do it? I think there are two main reasons why most people do. One reason is that you believe in the technology. In other words, you kind of see it as like an asymmetric bet. So there is some chance that Bitcoin will end up being worth nothing, but there's also some chance that it's going to end up being worth a heck of a lot more than it is now. Another reason that people get involved, it's a kind of a protection play. So if the dollar or the pound collapses, it's not likely at the moment, but if it does, then it's some kind of protection from that. It's something that no one can get at. That event in Cyprus where the government decided it was a bit short of cash and it was just going to take money out of people's bank accounts, that can't happen. I think another reason to get involved is it's just kind of fun. And it's not going to be fun for everyone. There are some people who find new things a bit scary or off-putting and they're just not their thing. But personally, I just find it really interesting. I find that the best way to learn about something is to have like a really tiny position in something just because you get to learn what it's like and you learn far more from doing something than you do by just hearing about it. So those are reasons why you would get involved, but there are reasons why you wouldn't get involved as well. The big one is the volatility because some people are just not going to want to go on the ride that Bitcoin is providing right now. So you really have to decide where you are in your life. Are you in an expansive mode of wealth or are you in a defensive mode of wealth? Are you trying to protect what you've got or are you trying to grow it more? And everyone listening will have their own answer. And for some, it might be somewhere in between. But based on that, you should adjust your investment strategy appropriately. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, there are two quick things for you to do. First, make sure you're subscribed to this channel and then go check out the Property Podcast wherever you listen.